皆さんこんにちは、シャーロックです。And welcome to another episode of Sherlock Investigates Japan. In this video, I will be revisiting the Shinsengumi. I can take it from here. Oh, okay then. Mata ato de. New guy thinks he owns the place already. Perhaps one of the most interesting groups of samurai were the Shinsengumi. Now, they were a special form of samurai police directly under the service of the Bakufu. The Bakufu were a military government directly under the control of the Shogun. As a result, the Shinsengumi were involved in many events of historical importance. One of the most famous of these incidents is the Ikedaya event. This would happen on July the 8th, 1864. This incident took place towards the end of the Edo period. The time of the samurai was coming to a close. The Meiji Restoration was well on its way. Here, Japan would join the rest of the world as a modern and industrial nation. The Shinsengumi were operating in and around Kyoto for most of the 1860s. It was during this time that political turmoil was ever increasing inside of Japan. The Bakufu forces were trying to push imperial supporters out of the capital cities. However, these imperial supporters would instead go underground and they began operating in secret. It was the job of the Shinsengumi to find, capture, or even kill these insurgents. They were ultimately trying to root out those who were wanting to take the power away from the shogun and return it back to the emperor. At this time, however, Emperor Kome wanted to unify his control over Japan alongside the Bakufu, sharing this power. However, the shogunate wanted to remain the central power in Japan, and they were doing everything they could to hang on to this. To maintain their power, the shogunate needed all groups of opposing thought removed. One such group were the Shishi. This was mostly formed of Ronin from the Choshu and Tosa domains, but also had members from Higo, Harima, Omi, Yamato, Mimasaka, and many other Ronin from in and around the Kyoto area. The Shishi were one of many groups that believed in Sono Joi, which translates roughly to revere the emperor and expel the foreign barbarians. For the Shinsengumi, this was an unacceptable threat to have in the heart of Kyoto. They began their investigation immediately. During the investigation, Shinsengumi members Yamazaki Susumu and Shimada Kai would discover a merchant going by the name Masuya Kemo. They discovered in actuality he was the Omi Goshi Furutaka Shuntaro. Furutaka was acting as an informant and passing information on to Shishi operatives. The Shinsengumi would perform an early morning raid against Furutaka's shop. Inside, they discovered much armor and weapons, as well as incriminating letters with information that was being passed on from Choshu Samurai. It then fell to Hijikata, the lead interrogator of the Shinsengumi, to find out the purpose of all of these supplies. Hijikata is said to have used torture against Furutaka to get this information. If you are at all squeamish, you may want to skip this bit. Furutaka was suspended upside down. Hijikata then drove large spikes deep into the bottom of Furutaka's feet. Into these open wounds, Hijikata then dripped hot wax from a candle. Okay, and you're safe again. Eventually, Furutaka admitted that he was not only aware of a plot by the Shishi, but he also knew they were using the Ikedaya Inn as their headquarters. Furutaka said the Shishi were waiting for a windy night where they would set a fire and have the wind carry this blaze across the whole of Kyoto. The Shishi were intending to use the ensuing chaos to kidnap either the local daimyo, Matsudaira Katamori, or the Emperor Komei himself, and to take them back to Choshu Domain as hostages. The Shishi were also hoping that the fire would destroy the Shinsengumi headquarters, allowing them to safely bring Choshu troops into Kyoto. Here is where there is some contention to the incident. There are seemingly 
no Shishi records that say they had the means or even the intention to enact this plot. There are also seemingly no Shinsengumi records of torture having been used in relation to this incident. So the mystery continues, as and when I find new information in relation to this, I will of course be bringing it straight to you. And so it was decided. The Shinsengumi were going to raid the Ikedaya Inn that very afternoon. So throughout the evening, the Shinsengumi began putting their officers in place in preparation. The Shinsengumi quickly dispatched officers to monitor the Ikedaya Inn. They would observe who was coming and going. If the Shinsengumi were to spot any known or suspected Son no Joi or Shishi supporters coming or going from the Ikedaya, this would confirm their information and meant they could finally make their move. After some time watching the Ikadaya, they did spot known Shishi operatives entering the building. Their information was confirmed and the operation could begin. Throughout this incident, the Shinsengumi were also passing their information, future plans and current actions on to the military commissioner of Kyoto, Matsudaira Katamori. It had actually been under orders from Matsudaira Katamori that the Shinsengumi had begun their investigation into the Shishi operatives. Because of this, the Shinsengumi had requested Matsudaira reinforcements. With only around 30 available Shinsengumi officers, they would have to complete this dangerous task on their own. The Shinsengumi would also be forced to further split down into two separate groups. The first was led by Kondo Isami. The other was led by Hijikata Toshizo. Hijikata would take his team and began investigating the other locations and information that they believed were suspicious. This was necessary for the Shinsengumi as they had no idea how widespread the Shishi operatives and their plot really was. They needed to cover all possibilities. Having been observing the Ikedaya since 7pm, by 10pm, the Shinsengumi were ready to make their move. Isami's team began moving into position. Takeda, Asano and Tani were left guarding the front entrance. Okuzawa, Nita and Ando were guarding the rear entrance. Isami would enter alongside Okita, Nagakura and Todo. As the Shinsengumi officers entered the Ikedaya, they were greeted by its master and owner, Sobe. Sobe quickly realised why the Shinsengumi were there. He turned, ran up the stairs and was shouting a warning to the Shishi operatives hiding inside of the building. Not wanting to lose their advantage, Okita and Isami both chased Sobe up the stairs. It is said that Okita shouted, anyone who resists will be cut down. However, the Shishi had also jumped into action. Although they had been taken by surprise, and so this caused confusion and some disorder within the Shishi ranks. In the confusion, most of the Shishi operatives ran to the rear exit to try and escape that way. However, for some of them, instead of escape, they would be captured or killed by Nita, Ando and Okozawa, who had been left at the rear entrance in anticipation of such a move by the Shishi. The remaining Shishi operatives would make a run directly for the front door in their attempt to escape. Those that ran to the front entrance of the building would be met head on by Isami and Okita. Those who managed to get past Isami and Okita would again find themselves captured or killed when they reached the front entrance by Nagakura and Todo. During the raid on the Ikedaya, many more weapons and armour would be found and seized by the Shinsengumi. This also included many firearms, black powder and ammunition. The fighting within the Ikedaya would end up lasting for more than two hours and also spilled out onto the surrounding streets. There are also marks from sword strikes from this combat left on Sanjōbashi. As a result of this heavy fighting, both sides would sustain multiple serious injuries and deaths. Okita Soji of the Shinsengumi, who was believed to suffer from tuberculosis, 
was seen coughing up blood and near collapsing during the combat. However, the reports from Shinsengumi said he was able to push through and continued fighting to the very end. However, it was the Shinsengumi officers stationed at the rear of the Ikedaya that would face the stiffest resistance. More than half of all Shishi insurgents had gone for the rear exit. This potentially even included a person of interest, Katsura Kogoro, potentially a leader of these Shishi. This meant that many Shishi operatives, including potentially Katsura, managed to escape via the rear exit, evading Shinsengumi capture. Whilst vastly outnumbered and with little to no available backup, Okozawa, Nita and Ando were truly fighting for their lives. It is during this heavy combat that Okozawa would be killed, and although mortally wounded, both Nita and Ando would continue fighting to the very end of the incident. However, they would both succumb to their wounds later. Although not as fierce as the combat at the rear of the Ikadaya, those fighting at the front by no means had an easy task. Nagakura would receive an injury across his hand whilst his sword was broken. Todo would be forced to leave the combat after being temporarily blinded by blood dripping into his eye after he sustained a head wound. Of course, it was the Shishi operatives who would sustain the heaviest losses. There were particularly heavy losses for the Tosa clan. Not one single member from that clan present would survive the Ikedaya incident. From the Tosa clan, both Ishika Junjiro and Kitazoe Kitsuma would be killed in combat. Tokoroyama Gokichiro and Fujikaze Hachiro would die of their injuries later, and Mochizuki Kiyata would choose to commit seppuku. Seppuku is an honourable and often ritualised form of samurai suicide. It is also sometimes called harakiri. Miyabi Teizo of Higo and Otaka Matajiro of Harima would both also be killed in action. From the Choshu clan, Yoshiaka Shosuke was also killed in combat with Shinsengumi. Sugiyama Shosuke would die of his injuries later. Yoshida Toshimaro again chose seppuku over capture. In total of the Shishi operatives, 10 were killed and a further 12 were arrested at the Ikadaya. The owner and master of the Ikadaya, Sobe, along with his family, would also be arrested and interrogated by the Shinsengumi. Sobe faced charges of conspiring with anti shogun forces, as well as trying to untie some of the captured Shishi during the combat and the raid of the Ikadaya. Sobe would be charged with these crimes and placed in prison, later dying on the 13th of July. For a long time, the 11 members of Kondo Isami's team had to hold down the entire Ikedaya by themselves. They were eventually reinforced when the 24 further Shinsengumi members from Hijikata Toshizo's team would arrive, and they also brought with them many samurai from the Aizu clan to bring the incident to a close. The Aizu clan would give the Shinsengumi 500 ryo as a reward for their actions, and the imperial courts would give a further 100 ryo. This total of 600 ryo has a modern day equivalent value of 60 million yen, or 570,000 US dollars. And with this, the Shinsengumi had proven themselves as a powerful and fearsome opponent to the anti bakufu forces. Over the next few years, the Shinsengumi would continue their operations and raids against anti bakufu forces in and around the city of Kyoto. This would continue right up until the Meiji Restoration. However, for the Shinsengumi, the world was rapidly changing around them. With the Meiji Restoration fast approaching, the normally lower class merchants were finding themselves ever more powerful and wealthy. 
There was also ever-increasing influences from foreign powers and cultures forcing their way into Japan. Japan itself was trying to progress towards a new age, one of relative peace. This meant that these samurai, who often tried to cling to the old ways, the ways of warfare, were seen as out of date and violent. Much of this would be compounded by the Shinsengumi's continued raid against anti bakufu forces. This would add to an ever-growing resentment towards the samurai class. Several members of the Shinsengumi would even continue their fight against imperialist control of Japan far into the Boshin Wars. But that is a story for another video. The Ikadai incident would become famous all across Japan. The impact both politically and socially would be felt all across the country for years to come. The incident had been one of the very few occasions of actual combat within the ancient capital city of Kyoto since the end of Japan's Sengoku period, its Warring States era. Some historians say it is the events at the Ikedaya that delayed the Meiji restorations for several years. Others say this event actually increased the rate at which Japan progressed towards the Meiji Restoration. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like at the bottom. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and click subscribe to keep notified of all future videos. Towards the beginning of Japan's Meiji. In and around the uh, meh, the Shishi were one of, one of. I did it again, didn't I? Allowing them to bring Choshu tro tropes. What? So during the evening of July the eighth, eighteen sixty-four, meh, meh, that the Shinsengumi's investigate investigation. With only 30. No. The second. I've forgotten his name. Let's call him Bob. And began invest. Ah! Investigating. It's not that difficult to say. It's the name of the channel. Why is that word so difficult? Hello. Shushwind! You're too noisy. No, shush means go quiet, not get louder. Yummy. Yeah, it's cool. I'll just stand here and wait for you to finish then, shall I? Although they had been... Nah. And in... And... Nah, nah, would be met head on by Isami and the other guy. What's his name? Henry, wasn't it? Who was believed to have been... This... <laughs> To being temporarily blinded by blood, 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 blood. I did it. Praise be, I can form a coherent sentence. The anti samurai feelings. Yeah, no. And subscribe as well to continue. <sighs> I think that was right. Once more for luck.